As the Countach's successor, Diablo was released in 1990. It was made with money from Chrysler, which bought Lamborghini in 1987 and invested in it. It's not surprising that the Diablo was more technologically advanced than any other Lamborghini before it. In the end, it survived for 11 years and produced 2,884 cars, breaking the Countach record. Diablo is pronounced devil in Spanish, not Italian. It was designed by Marcello Gandini, a master stylist from Italy, just like the Countach and many other Lamborghinis. The car's sloping front end, steeply raked windscreen, and scissors doors were all subtle clues that it was a direct descendant of its predecessor. However, Chrysler's design team in the United States improved cooling and aerodynamics, smoothed out any sharp edges or corners, and refined the final design. However, it is undeniable that the Chrysler-refined Diablo was prettier and more durable than the Cezita, and Gandini was dissatisfied with this decision and decided to realize his original design in another supercar the Suzita Marauder V16T. It appeared pure while also aggressive, futuristic while also mature. Chrysler's care for the smallest details complemented Gandini's fame. The most important aspect was that it had a truly exotic appearance, which is something that modern supercars do not have. The McLaren F1 and Jaguar XJ220 may look sexy, but they are not aggressive or dramatic enough. The Lamborghini was unique. Its styling implied speed, speed increase, and power. Indeed, even in halt, its appearance let you know it was a 200 miles per hour supercar, no, maybe 250 miles per hour. Assuming that you let me name the best supercar plan during the 1990s, Diablo will continuously be the first I would consider. Diablo, on the other hand, was just a technological extension of Countach. The Countach space frame chassis, aluminum body, and transmission layout were quite advanced when it was first introduced at the beginning of the 1970s. By utilizing lightweight construction, twin-turbo engines, and space-age carbon fiber materials at the beginning of the late 1980s, the Porsche 959, Ferrari GTO, and F40 sparked a new era in supercar design. In contrast, the Diablo remained seated on Countach's laurel without making any significant adjustments. The large V12 chassis and body were simply modifications to the previous model. It also gained a little bit more cabin space, which was desperately needed, as well as additional length, width, and wheelbase. Consequently, a standard Diablo weighed more than 1,600 kilograms, about 130 kilograms more than the previous Countach. Straight-line execution was never an issue to the Diablo, in light of the fact that its 5.7-liter V12 delivered near 500 pull. It was recorded 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.5 second and a maximum velocity of 202 miles per hour. The wild case of early Countach was at last satisfied by its replacement. It was the quickest creation supercar of now is the ideal time. Obviously, some restricted creation supercars recorded higher speed. The V12 was always the crown jewel. Despite its powerful and sharp throttle response, its thunderous roar, which resonated with your heartbeat as the revs increased, was what most impressed. Stronger and rawer than Ferrari's V12, the Lamborghini motor clamor could scarcely forgettable. Diablo's issue was actually handling. Since its inception, its big and powerful supercar philosophy has almost become a cliché. 
It was too big, too wide, and too heavy to carry. It never felt as agile as a smaller supercar or even a Porsche 911 Turbo, despite the fact that its extra track provided cornering stability and its supercar tires produced a lot of grip. Driving confidence was also diminished by the lack of front and rear visibility. The Diablo could barely keep up with a 911 Turbo, which cost less than half as much, unless it was racing on a wide, smooth track. Its brakes were not big enough to handle its weight well even on a racing track. Diablo underwent gradual evolution over its 11-year lifespan, see below. Due to its diet, the SV from 1995 to 1999 was probably the best Diablo ever. The performance of the 2000 GT was even improved to the point where it was a respectable racing machine. The Diablo was almost forgotten when the Bugatti EB110, Jaguar XJ220, McLaren F1, and Ferrari F50 became very expensive supercars in the early 1990s. The Diablo was slower, heavier, cheaper, and less exclusive than the Countach which was widely regarded as the best supercar in the world for a long time. Truly, Diablo was the main result of Lamborghini so it should be generally modest to work to sell 300 to 400 vehicles yearly rather than the previously mentioned one-off specials. Because of this, it was relegated to the second division supercar club where only the last breed of boxer Ferrari the 512TR-F512M remained. The Lamborghini was unquestionably regarded as the best model of its kind at all times. Since the demise of F512M, the Diablo turned into the just mid-engine creation supercar on the planet. At that time, it was only possible to compare it to GTs with front engines, like the 550 Maranello and Aston Vantage. Despite revisions every one or two years, Diablo production decreased gradually. It's possible that people became more concerned about driving convenience and comfort, or that the old Diablo was no longer able to excite people, as it had to be retired in 2001. However, the best aspects of Diablo will always be in our minds, the exotic exterior and the powerful V12. Diablo VT, which stood for viscous traction, was the first derivative of Diablo. Evolution and derivatives it was merely the Diablo with four wheels. When the rear wheels slipped, power was transferred to the front wheels via a straightforward viscous coupling. This significantly improved its handling in wet conditions, despite some dry understeer. The all-wheel drive equipment added around 50 kilograms. The most popular Diablo in 1995 was the SE30, a special edition released to commemorate Lamborghini's 30th anniversary. Changes included Utilizing magnesium wheels, carbon fiber engine lid and rear spoiler, less equipment, thinner cabin trim, and racing bucket seats reduce weight by more than 100 kilograms. The revised engine management system brought the horsepower up to 525. New front bumper with adjustable anti-roll bars improved front brake cooling. The new lid for the engine improved cooling and reduced drag. A one-of-a-kind purple body paint that was not present on any previous Diablo models. There were only 150 SE30s produced. At the time, it was the fastest and most sought-after Diablo. Diablo SE30 Hota